The Instant Camera Guy here. You guys gave feedback and I listened. Introducing the Polar Vault version 2.0. My lithium ion battery solution for all SX70s. Now with a vastly improved design. For those that saw my video the other day, and a whole bunch of you did because it got like 2,000 likes in 24 hours, uh, 2,000 views I should say, which was quite a lot for this small little channel, um, will know that I added a lithium ion battery to an SX70 Model 1 uh, and wired it in by deleting the film counter. Doing so allowed me to put a little buck converter inside in place of the film counter and power the camera off of two 3.7 volt lithium ion batteries. Well, you guys really liked that, but a few of you left comments asking whether or not it could be done leaving the film counter intact because, and rightly so, fair enough, a few of you said, oh look, I'll really miss having the film counter, having at least a rough idea of how many shots I have left. So I went back to the drawing board and figured out, yeah, it's actually entirely possible. Um, what I've done, instead of having a little switch in the battery box, I've gutted that section and placed the buck converter there instead. What I've done is hardwired the negative connection that comes from the battery into the hinge switch of the camera. So all the body ribbon cables that used to be inside the camera that go to the hinge switch at the rear are completely severed. There's now no connection whatsoever. And the hinge switch, instead of connecting to the body panels, now connects direct to the battery before it goes into the buck converter. So what that means is in the collapsed position, the camera is completely powered off. No juice is flowing from the batteries whatsoever, but when you erect the camera, it turns on. How neat is that? No power button, no switch, no need for an LED telling you if the pack is on or off. You just collapse the camera, <laughs> which I think is really neat. So. Um, let's go through the pros and cons list uh, like I did last time. Um, the main advantages to this, number one, it's really small. As far as I can really figure out, this is basically as compact a solution that I can come up with to power these cameras off of any kind of external batteries. Uh, second advantage, it doesn't go into the flash socket. Uh, Dennis from Chromatic Parts invented a really cool thing that works especially well with sonar cameras that have a positive and negative terminal already in the um, already in the top housing. But um, basically, that my modification, because it's at the other end of the camera, keeps the flash socket completely open. So if you want to plug in a mint flash and still power the camera, well, that's obviously easy to do. Uh, other advantages. Another advantage is it uses entirely off-the-shelf components. I've wanted to make a lithium-ion battery solution for these for years now, but I've always been against the idea of having to custom make parts or rely on very, uh, very niche specific third parties. What I'm trying to say here is I don't want the supply chain to be particularly limited. My preferred method of fixing these things is to use as many off-the-shelf options as I can. The reason being it'll prolong the life of the camera. If I can figure out a way to put these together with rivets from a hardware store, I'd prefer to do that than have to rely on the one rivet maker in town who lives 500 miles away and is the only you know, place that can come up with parts. By keeping all the components that make up the battery adapter off the shelf, it makes it simple, but easy to repair in the future. So what makes up the battery adapter? Well, we have a two AAA battery holder and a tiny buck converter, which converts 7.4 volt of lithium ion down to a rock solid six volts, which is necessary to power the camera. Now, 
Could I power the camera off a higher voltage and just run it off 7.4 volts directly? Probably not. 6.4 volts is the absolute upper limit that Polaroid recommends for an SX70. Running it off 7.4 would probably release all the magic smoke <laughs> that makes the SX70 work. I, I would not recommend doing that. I will be doing a video in the future of how to wire one of these up. If you are the DIY inclined person, I will be making this solution open source, uh, I guess letting you guys know how you can DIY. The only thing I will say is that it is rather involved to do. Uh, so if you are planning on doing one of these mods, you're going to have to be very good at soldering and set aside a good hour of your time in order to install one of these things. Um, but back to the pros and cons list. So advantage, it's very small, it's very powerful, it uses entirely off-the-shelf components. Uh, the new design, because it keeps both the butt converter and the batteries completely separate from the internals of the camera, it's going to be easy to repair. You know, if we, for example, end up with a dodgy butt converter or it gets wet and blows up or, or something like that, it's not going to be a problem. And then maybe you put the batteries in backwards and it blows up or something like that, it's going to be easy enough to service. Uh, and the parts are cheap, so that means I can keep the cost of this cheap in relation to everything else. I'm gonna be able to modify and install one of these for less than the cost of buying one of Retrospect's AAA battery adapters, which are about 99 US dollars. So it's gonna be cheaper than that. Um, I'm hesitant to release full price details in the video, just in case four years time, parts, inflation, that kind of stuff. Um, but if you want one of these mods done, just ask me. Uh, let's talk about some of the disadvantages. Well, disadvantages, like all battery solutions, it does require an additional bulk added to the camera. There's really just no other way of going about that. There's not a lot I can do inside an SX-70. There is just no room in the chassis to mount batteries internally without insane amounts of modification. It's just, it ain't gonna happen. I can free up a bit of space deleting the film counter because it's not necessary, but it's just not going to happen anytime soon. And it's not going to happen neatly without making entirely new body panels, which is a whole different ballgame. Uh, what are some other disadvantages? Um, I guess if you're a purist and you like the absolute purity of the SX-70 design, then yes, it does add that little bit of bulk, so you could argue it's a bit of an ugly solution. Although I must say, of all the solutions out there, being the smallest, at least you don't notice it. And at least when you look at the camera from the front, it looks the same. In fact, <laughs> you can cover it up with your hands <laughs> if it really bothers you that much. Um, another disadvantage, if you do have the model of camera that has strap lugs, the positioning of the battery pack does make it a little bit harder to insert the official Polaroid strap. Now, it's certainly not impossible, and once the strap is on, uh, it does stay on nicely, but it is because it basically the lugs just curve over where the battery compartment goes anyway. But it is a little bit harder to attach just because the battery compartment kind of gets in the way. As I said, it's not a huge deal. It actually makes it harder to get them off than it does to, to put them on. But if that's a deal breaker for you, then I don't know. But I mean, honestly, it doesn't make it that much more difficult. Um, are there any other cons? I mean, before the main con was it deleted the film counter, but well, I've, <laughs> I've worked my way around that now. The film counter is still here. It works like before. Um, one quirk of the modification is that because the hinge switch uh, yeah, the hinge switch on this side, because that's now the power button for turning the batteries on, uh, the automatic dark slide eject does need to be disabled because otherwise it's going to be a really bad idea. You would basically be erecting the camera and every time there was no film in it, it would be whirring the motor, which is not what you want at all. Um, so that means when you insert a pack of film, you just have to manually eject the dark slide first. I'm not gonna call that a pro or a con. I think that's more of a feature rather than a bug. Um, but yeah, there you have it. Um, my new and improved iType solution for any Polaroid SLR camera. Now, I know people in the comments are gonna ask, 
is it possible to use such an adapter with an SLR 680, being that it has the built-in flash? My answer to that is, yeah, I think it's going to be possible. I certainly think this has enough juice to power an SLR 680, but that flash draws a hell of a lot of amps. Um, I don't really trust it being so healthy for that tiny little buck converter over a long period of time. If you really want your 680 powered by one, I'm happy to experiment, but I think if you're a heavy user of flash, I think that huge power draw is gonna be a little bit problematic. I think it'll work fine, but I just can't guarantee after a few years it'll be lasting as long as the standard Sonar and, and non-flash models. Um, and then la the last thing I wanted to talk about is the batteries themselves. Uh, I mentioned this in my last video. The batteries are 10440, 3.7 volt, 320 milliamp hour lithium ion cells. They are the same shape and size as a regular AAA battery, but they are not. They're a totally different voltage, so do not go and put these in your television remote because it'll completely blow up. Um, you can buy these very cheaply from eBay. I picked up two of them for 10 Australian dollars shipped. Uh, so they're very, very cheap. And they use a dedicated charger, like so, which is just USB powered. So you can just plug this into your regular phone charger. Uh, and basically, yeah, you just hook the batteries up like so. Uh, these chargers, again, very cheap. You can get them in two, three, and four cell charging capacities. I got the four cells because it was only a few dollars extra. If you wanted a more compact charger, of course, you only need one half the size because it only does need two cells. Um, so you could see this as a disadvantage that yes, you do need a proprietary charger to go along with it. But I mean, these are a universal design. Any 3.7 volt charging unit will be able to power your set of batteries. Um, I see this as an advantage personally, because it means that I don't have to build any charging circuitry into the camera itself, which means there's less to fail in the camera. If this fails, literally buy another one, they're $15. So um, yeah, just another little thing you will have to be aware of, but all up, like a set of four batteries, so that's, uh, two to power the camera and two sets of spares that you can take with you into the field, all up is gonna cost you, what, maybe $35 Australian, so roughly $20, $25 US, at least at the time of me reporting this video. Um, so really cheap, really effective, really awesome. And uh, yeah, that's really all there is to say. Um, Obviously, as I just mentioned, one of the big advantages with using these kind of batteries is they are a hard cell battery. They're very durable. You could easily take spares of these into the field. You know, let's say you're going hiking or camping or something, you're gonna be away from electricity for weeks on end. You can take many copies, uh, many spares. Um, and it does mean if those batteries ever cease to hold a charge because no battery lasts forever. So in five or 10 years time, if you need a new set of batteries, very easy to replace them. Uh, so yeah, I think that's really all I wanted to mention. Um, a huge design improvement over the original that I came up with, being that it now powers the film counter. And you guys have been so thirsty for these. I'm sold out of these mods at the time of me posting. Obviously I'm gonna get more in. So if you're watching this, don't think this is the last run I'm ever gonna do. I will be building more. Um, but yeah, the initial run sold out literally in an hour when I announced version 2.0. So I've built five of these already and they're all gonna go off to their happy clients. Um, but yeah, that's really all I wanted to say. As always, thank you for watching and thank you for your support. If you want one of your cameras modified, hook me up with the links below. Uh, get in touch, we'll have a chat and see what we can do. But yeah, this is now a service I'll be offering to anyone that's having their camera overhauled by me. It's something that I can pretty easily add while the camera's already disassembled. Stay tuned over the next week or so for a follow-up video where I'll show you guys how to wire it in yourself. Uh, but be aware, it's not for beginners. So if you're very handy with a soldering iron and have all the tools, feel free. Um, anyway. Have a wonderful day, happy shooting, may all your photos turn out amazing, and I'll see you next time.